Good morning, everyone. It is Monday, March 30th. I hope you all had a good weekend. I hope you stayed inside the house as hard as that may have been. And I hope that you are finding things to keep you busy on the weekends since um, you shouldn't have schoolwork on the weekends if you're getting it done during the week. Um, I miss you all so much. This is weird that this is now officially like the third week that um, this is happening. It's starting to feel like a little bit more routine for me, um, which is really weird. Um, and it's really weird that this is the way it's going to be for at least another month. Um, so I'm feeling a lot of um, strange emotions. I'm sure that you're feeling a lot of strange emotions. I couldn't imagine if this happened to me when I was your age in sixth grade. So please reach out. Um, if you're lonely, if you're bored, if you're stressed, you know, any emotion that you're feeling, please reach out and we can just talk, um, over the phone, over Zoom, if you want to see me. Um, I'm here for all of you, not just academically, but um, emotionally as well. All right. Um, homework is posted. Homework is um, a little bit longer than last week, so we might cut back on the amount of classwork um, there is this week since we um, want to acknowledge that the homework is a little bit longer this week and we don't want to overwhelm you. So I have a meeting with Ms. Cromarty um, later today, and her and I will talk about uh, maybe doing less classwork this week so that you have more time for that longer homework assignment. Um, only other update I can think of is um, Ms. Cromarty and I will also be starting to put in grades today. Um, we've been telling you since the Monday before you guys left um, that we would still be grading. Um, I believe all of your classes are still grading. So uh, we will be putting grades in now that it's been, um, you know, the first full week is over and everyone should have a Chromebook and Wi-Fi now. So um, we will be starting to put in grades today. So if you're wondering how you're doing, you can check um, Google Classroom and Aspen later today. We won't have every single assignment graded by the end of the day today, but we will have every single assignment graded um, by like Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday. Our goal is Wednesday, but depending on how many meetings and things like that we have this week, it might be later in the week. Um, in my Friday video, I mentioned how I did a professional development on um, vocab jams on that um, vocabulary.com website. Um, so I am going to schedule one of those for later this week, probably Thursday or Friday. Um, I'm going to schedule that today. So in tomorrow's video, I'll let you know um, the day and time that I have scheduled it for so that you can plan ahead and log on and do that because I know that all of you guys really like doing those. Um, last week we did some homeroom hangouts on Wednesday afternoon. Um, 6-1 and 6-2 had great turnouts. 6-3, not so much. I miss you guys, 6-3. Where are you at? I want to see you and check in with you. Um, so this week I think we might combine just because um, we had few enough people um, that we could do a combined one. Um, so that will be for sure Wednesday afternoon. I'm thinking 1.30 p.m., um, but I will, again, confirm that time tomorrow, and that's on Zoom on Wednesday afternoon. And it's not academic. It's just a space to socialize and catch up with everyone. So that will most likely be Wednesday afternoon at 1.30. Um, 
That is all I can think of for now. So that being said, let's get started. Make sure that you have your notebook. If you don't have your notebook, you have a piece of paper that you're going to keep in a safe place. A pencil. If you don't have a pencil, you're getting something else to write with. Your Dragon Wings book. If you don't have your Dragon Wings book, you can open up the readings that are attached to this assignment on Google Classroom. So notebook or piece of paper, pencil or something to write with, Dragon Wings book or the readings open on Google. Google Classroom. Awesome. So, our word today is vehement. Fancy word, vehement. Vehement means showing strong and often angry feelings or feeling very emotional. An example sentence of vehement is, once I understood her, I vehemently shook my head. And there's a picture of um, Dr. Martin Luther King um, because his speeches, he would speak vehemently because he was very angry about the injustices that were happening to black people in America at the time and he would get very emotional during his speeches so he often spoke vehemently go ahead and pause this if you are not finished and make sure you're also writing down your own example sentence awesome we're going to move on to the teacher notes today. Today we are doing a very similar assignment to last week. The only difference is that it's going to be multiple choice this time and on Google Forms. Um, so these notes are specifically about when answering multiple choice questions. So here are your notes for today. So when you are answering multiple choice questions, you want to make sure that you read the question before reading so that you know what to read for. That's a trick that I've been showing you guys all year. It's a good idea to read the question before reading because we can read for so many things. We can read for central idea. We can read for theme. We can read for a key event happening, a character development happening. So when we read the question and know what we're supposed to read for, it helps us out greatly. We also always want to go back to the text. So most of the questions we've given you over the past week have had page numbers. You want to make sure that you pay attention to those page numbers and that you go to those pages to get your answer. Sometimes it might seem like you can find your answer on another page, but if Ms. Cromarty and I or MCAS or another quiz is telling you specific pages to go to, then it means that the answer that we are looking for is definitely on those pages. The trickiest thing about multiple choice is selecting the most correct answer, not the first correct answer. We started practicing this back in February, especially on MCAS. They tried to trick you and they give you multiple options that sound correct. And multiple options might be correct, but you are looking for the most correct answer. We kind of went through this last week when we were finding evidence. I would stop and when I was reading and I would say, technically this is correct. Technically you could write this down, but I'm going to look for a better piece of evidence. That's what I'm talking about. Is technically some multiple choice options are correct, but you need to find the best one, the one that is most relevant to the question. So you need to read all of your options all of the time. And last but not least, I modeled this one for you every day last week. 
using a keyword from the question. So you should always look for a word that's not in every question or a word that stands out to you that you know is important. And you can skim pages for that word to help you. Now, as you might remember from last week, it doesn't always work out. For example, with Miss Whitlaw, we skimmed for her name, but Moonshadow wasn't calling her Miss Whitlaw in chapter six. He was calling her the Demoness. So after we finished skimming for Miss Whitlaw, I had noticed that word Demoness a lot, and I had to rethink what my keyword should be. Even though that word Demoness was not in my question, that is another name for Miss Whitlaw who was in my question. So those are the types of things that MCAS is going to expect you to know how to do. So that's why I was modeling that for you last week and may have to model it for you again this week depending on the questions that we encounter. Go ahead and pause this video if you're not finished writing these notes. I'm going to move on. Awesome, awesome. So, um, if you did not already grab your book, please grab that now. Again, if you don't have a book, go ahead and open up your readings on Google Classroom. Um, and you also need to open the Google form, which is your assignment for today. It should be titled 33020 Chapter 7 Text Dependent Questions. Unfortunately, um, I forgot to print it, and because it's a Google form, I can't show you on my phone because it's not a Google Doc. So, um, but you should be able to find it on your own. There's the only attachments to this assignment on Google Classroom are this video that you're watching, the readings that I already told you to open, and then this assignment. So again, it's a Google form, 330, 20, chapter seven, text dependent questions. So when you get there, you're gonna to need to type your name. You can just type your first name, um, if you want to type your first and last name, that's great too. Then you're going to select the section that you're in, 6162 or 63. So go ahead and do those two steps. And by now you should have those two steps done. So now we're going to move on to the first question. Again, our notes just said that we should read the question before we start reading. So it says read pages 145 to 149, then stop and answer the following question. So we're still doing stop and jots just like last week. So what that means for my reading is I'm still going to read the whole chapter today, even though I'm not going to do every single question with you today. So I will just remind you at the end of each page uh, which question you should be doing at that time. And then you should pause the video and answer that question. And then replay the video when you're ready for me to continue reading. So I'm going to start by reading pages 145 to 149. Then we're going to stop and do number 1A and 1B together. 1A says, according to Moonshadow, how does Miss Whitlaw relate to the people around her, even if they are very different? So we're looking for how Miss Witch Whitlaw relates to people around her. I'm assuming that means like in her neighborhood even if they're very different. Our options are A, Miss Whitlaw does her best to understand what people are saying. B, Miss Whitlaw sees people for who they are and wants to genuinely get to know them. C, Miss Whitlaw communicates her care and love for people through her cooking. Or D, Miss Whitlaw is a shy woman but does her best to connect with interesting people like Moonshadow. 
So even if D is not correct, that actually gives me the hint that this is about Miss Whitlaw relating to Moonshadow and Wind Rider specifically. So um, according to Moonshadow, how does Miss Whitlaw relate to the people around her even if they are different? That might actually be referring to how she relates to Moonshadow and Wind Rider. And then we'll pick the best piece of evidence for 1B. So I'm going to go ahead and open my book to chapter 7, which is on page 145. <clears throat> and that first question kind of gave us a reminder of where we left off in chapter 6. But just as a quick review, we left off... Um, meeting Miss Whitlaw for the first time, and Moonshadow is pleasantly surprised by her. So he was expecting her to be mean and ugly like the other demons that he's met, but she's actually very pretty, very nice, um, and he actually likes her so much so far that he thinks that they might have been mother and son in a past life. So very positive first impression between Moonshadow and Miss Whitlaw. Um, the only other new character that Moonshadow and Windrider met is Miss Whitlaw's niece, Robin. Um, and we don't know a lot about Robin yet. We just know that she's nosy because she wasn't supposed to be listening to Miss Whitlaw, Moonshadow, and Windrider's conversation. And she was sneakily listening with her ear up against the door. And she ended up falling into the door. The door opened and she fell into the kitchen and got caught eavesdropping. So um, that's really all we know about her so far is that she's a curious kid. So again, I'm on page 145, chapter 7, Educations, May to June 1905. The next day was much like every day for me during our stay among the demons. I got up just before dawn and got the fire going in the stove and put water on to boil and cooked our morning rice. I would help father with his handyman chores in certain of Mr. Alger's buildings that were in safe areas. Father said it ought to be all right to do my shopping any time from the morning to the early afternoon, because there were mostly harmless shoppers on the streets then. But I had to be back at the stable before the demon children got out of school. I was also to avoid any demons or demonesses standing about in large groups talking idly. I followed father's orders faithfully. I had no desire to get beaten up or strung from a lamppost by my hair. In the evening, after I had cooked dinner and washed up, there would be lessons in reading and writing the Tang people's words and in the use of the abacus for arithmetic, page 146. I lived my life like that every day except for the demon's seventh day, Sunday. As you can see, the, this did not leave me much time to follow my original program of re-educating the demoness about dragons. But despite everything, Father made it a point to let me have half an hour free each day. I could do anything I wanted during that time, spit at the wall, sleep on my mat, or simply go off on my own. I think Father was secretly pleased when, a few days after we moved in, I decided to use the time to pay another visit to the demoness. I don't mean to make myself sound like a goody-goody. She was a demoness to me at that time, who lived in a magical kind of lair. It was an adventure. It was a challenge, and if I could remind her of some of the true things about dragons that people ought to know, but that she seemed to have forgotten, well, that was to the good. I went up to the demoness's house in my clean tunic and pants, my boots shined and my face scrubbed, and my charm around my neck. She smiled quietly and prettily as she had that first day. Why come in, Moonshadow? Miss Whitlock stood away from the door. Would you like some cookies and milk? Maybe cookies and tea? I asked. I held up the small package I had brought, page 147. It was a jasmine-type tea that is sweet and light and fragrant. On the cover was a dragon. Oh, how nice, the demoness said. But really, we don't need it. I have tea. Father had warned me that demons sometimes do not have a feeling for the proprietaries. 
It's always good on the first visit to bring a little something to drink or eat. If Father hadn't explained that to me carefully, I might have been offended by the demoness's refusal, because I might have mistaken her statement as saying that my gift was too cheap for her to use. I fumbled around for some excuse. Please, I drink a lot. Too much. You take tea. I thrust it out at her again. With a soft laugh, the demoness took it and lifted the lid. Why, there are flowers inside. She put water on to boil and then sat down across from me and picked at the tea until she could hold up one of the small, white, delicate blossoms. Isn't that a lovely idea? Flowers in your tea. She got up and returned with a small, white thingamabob that had thickened cow's milk in it. Thickened yet? And it had an oily kind of smell that nearly made me sick. She also set down a sugar bowl. Cream and sugar, Moonshadow? Oh, but you never put that into it. Page 148. She stood with the sugar bowl in her hand. You don't? No, no. It ruined tea. I will say this for the demoness. She was much more open to suggestion than I was. She put the sugar bowl and the, ugh, cream jar away, despite her misgivings. But after we had brewed the tea in the teapot, she sniffed at the spout appreciatively. Hmm, but this does smell nice. And she poured out two cups of the amber liquid. She sipped it tentatively. I watched her face as she broke into her smile and drank more. At least I had broken her of putting cream and sugar into everything. We drank our tea in a friendly kind of silence, and then Miss Whitlaw picked up the box again. Her finger traced the long, sinuous curves of the golden dragon. Oh my, isn't it a... It sounded like... Foo de foo dragon? Please? Beautiful, she repeated, and explained the word to me. Once I understood her, I shook my head vehemently. No, no. It, uh... I fumbled for the right word in the demon language, but all I could come up with was, a uh, dragony dragon. Another thing to say for the demoness was her genuine interest in learning about people as people, where some idiot like myself would have been smug and patronizing. The demoness really wanted to learn. Page 149. And like father, she was not afraid to talk to me like an equal. I don't think I understand. Dragon do terrible thing, yes, I said, struggling for the right words. But dragon, they do good thing too. Bring rain for crops. They king among all. All reptile. They emperor of all animal. And so on. I went on to tell the demoness everything my father had told me about dragons. Why, how marvelous, the demoness exclaimed when I was finished. I never knew dragons did so much. Maybe only bad kind go live here. You know, outlaw. They respectable dragon no want. Why, yes, the demoness nodded. That would make sense. All the dragons I've read about haven't been very pleasant creatures. No dragon pleasant. A dragon dragony. At that moment, someone knocked on the door. I looked up at the clock on the demoness's cabinet. I had spent over an hour here. That my father, I said frightened. He looked for me. It was my fault, so don't worry. She added something that sounded like, Tia, please. And we're going to pause on page 150 to answer question 1A and 1B. So, 1A, according to Moonshadow, how does Miss Whitlaw relate to the people around her, even if they are very different? A, Miss Whitlaw does her best to understand what people are saying. B, Miss Whitlaw sees people for who they are and wants to genuinely get to know them. C, Miss Whitlaw communicates her care and love for people through her cooking. Or D, Miss Whitlaw is a shy woman but does her best to connect with interesting people like Moonshadow. So, there are two answers that I feel like are for sure not the correct answer. And one other thing we forgot to mention in our notes that's very important when answering multiple choice questions is process of elimination. It is a beautiful thing. I've used it my whole life. Um, you should always eliminate the ones that you know are definitely wrong. That way you're not looking at them anymore and you can really focus in on the ones that are options. So the two that I know are definitely incorrect are C and D. C says, Miss Whitlaw communicates her care and love for people through her cooking. Cooking is not making tea. So she is not cooking 
for moon shadow right now. On top of the fact that cooking is not making tea, moon shadow brought the tea. So it was actually moon shadow's idea to have tea, not Miss Whitlaw's. So C is definitely incorrect. D. Miss Whitlaw is a shy woman, but does her best to connect with interesting people like Moonshadow. There hasn't been anything on these pages or in Chapter 6 when we met her that should make us think that she's shy. She's never spoken quietly. She's never um, blushed or gotten embarrassed. Um... There's never been any descriptions of her being a shy woman. So D is definitely not correct. So that leaves us with A and B. A, Miss Whitlaw does her best to understand what people are saying. Or B, Miss Whitlaw sees people for who they are and wants to genuinely get to know them. So when I think of A, someone doing their best to understand what people are saying, Especially in an example like this book, where English is not Moonshadow's first language, A makes me think that Miss Whitlaw has a hard time understanding Moonshadow, but tries her best to understand him. And on these pages, 145 to 149, it didn't seem like she was having a hard time understanding him. He was speaking in broken English, which means that like his sentences weren't complete, um, his grammar wasn't perfect, he used kind of made up words like dragony, um, but she still could understand what he was saying without really having to try that hard. So I don't think A would be the correct answer. B, Miss Whitlaw sees people for who they are and wants to genuinely get to know them. She's taking time out of her day to sit down and talk to Moonshadow. She might still have the dishes to do. She might still have laundry to do. She might still have to help Robin with her schoolwork. But instead, Moonshadow randomly knocked on her door and asked if he could share some tea with her. And she put down everything that she had going on to sit down and have tea with him for not only the half hour that he was supposed to be there, but for a whole hour. So to me, that seems like she genuinely wants to get to know him. So B is the correct answer. So go ahead and click B. And then one B is finding the evidence to support that answer. So we're looking for the evidence that best supports that Miss Whitlaw sees people for who they are and wants to genuinely get to know them. So our options are A, where some idiot like myself would have been smug and patronizing, the demon really wanted to learn. B, we drank our tea in a kind of friendly silence. C, Another thing to say for the demoness was her genuine interest in learning about people as people. Or D, I went on to tell the demoness everything my father had told me about dragons. So, again, there are two that I know for sure are not the correct answer. So I'm going to use process of elimination and X those out. B is definitely not the correct answer. All B says is we drank our tea in a kind of friendly silence. Well, if you're silent, then how are you genuinely getting to know someone? That doesn't make sense. So B is not the correct answer. The second option that I know is definitely not the correct answer is D. I went on to tell the demoness everything my father had told me about dragons. Well... She might be listening to that and wanting to genuinely get to know about the dragons, but B is talking about genuinely wanting to get to know the person. She genuinely wants to get to know Moonshadow. She doesn't want a history lesson on dragons necessarily. So this isn't about dragons. So D is not the correct answer. So that leaves us with A and C. 
A, where some idiot like myself would have been smug and patronizing, the demoness really wanted to learn. Okay, that sounds like it could be a good option. C, another thing to say for the demoness was her genuine interest in learning about people as people. So even though A could be correct, C is the best answer because not only does it use that keyword genuine, just like our answer in 1A did, but it also talks about getting to know people as people. So it is a deeper explanation of her wanting to get to know Moonshadow. So C is the correct answer to 1B. So in addition to marking the answers on your Google form, I want you to also write your answers down on your notebook or your piece of paper because there's a possibility that we don't finish the chapter today because it is a long chapter and unfortunately Google Forms do not save your answers. Google Forms you have to fill out all at once and submit. So um, in the situation where we might not finish today, I want you to um, save your answers on your piece of paper. So I want you to write down in your teacher notes or in your classwork section, um, 1A, the answer is B, and 1B, the answer is C. So somewhere on your piece of paper or your worksheet, your piece of paper or worksheet should look something like that. So just keeping a list of the question we're on and the correct answer. All right, and I might even title it Google Form Monday 3.30 so that I don't forget like where those answers go to. All right. So the reason I say that is because I noticed that we're already 33 minutes into um, the video and um, I don't want you to spend more than one hour a day on ELA so um, and we're only on page 150 and I know that this chapter goes to like 165 or something so um, I just want to make sure that um, we're staying within the time frame that we should so Awesome. 1A and 1B are done. We have those written down in our notes in case we don't finish today. So now we're going to move on to 2A and 2B. It says read page 149, which we actually already read, then stop and answer the following question. So you're actually going to answer this question now. I'm not going to do this one with you. I'm just going to read it to you. So 2A. How does Moonshadow react to hear Miss Whitlaw's point of view on dragons? A. He becomes offended and wants to end his visit early with her. B. He refuses to tell her anything else about dragons because she hurt his feelings. C. He insists that his understanding about dragons is correct no matter what she thinks. Or D. He attempts to understand how they could have different points of view and suggests that they are both right. So this should be an easy one, because if I were answering this question, there are three options that I would definitely eliminate. There are three options that are definitely incorrect. So that should leave you with your correct answer. So you can go ahead and pause this video if you have not selected your correct answer yet. I'm going to move on to reading you the 2B options. 2B, which evidence best supports your answer above? 
A, I went on to tell the demoness everything about everything my father had told me about dragons. B, maybe only bad kind live here. You know, outlaw, that respectable dragon no want. C, I don't think I understand. Or D, but dragon, they do good thing too. Bring rain for crops, they king among all. So there are two options here that to me are definitely incorrect. So that would leave you with two technically correct options. So you need to make sure that you reread those and pick the best one, the one that relates to your answer of 2A the most. And you can go ahead and pause this video until you are finished with 2A and 2B. And I'm going to move on. All right. So before we move on, make sure that you also wrote down your answers to 2A and 2B on your notebook or worksheet. So again, I'm not going to write my answers for 2A and 2B because you should have done that on your own, but your notes or your classwork section should look something like this so that in case we don't submit today, you will remember all of your answers and be able to submit tomorrow when we finish. All right, I'm going to move on to... The third question now. Read pages 150 to 156, then stop and answer the following questions. 3A. What is the real reason that Robin starts to wash her dishes outside and get fresh air? So Robin, Miss Whitlaw's niece, um, that is around Moonshadow's age, is going to come outside and wash the dishes instead of washing them in the sink in the kitchen. She says that she does this to get fresh air, but apparently that's a lie. So what's the real reason? Let's find out. I'm starting on the top of page 150. Let me get comfortable. Okay, please follow along. The demoness looked embarrassed. I said, dear, it means a friend or someone who is close to you. She smoothed out a wrinkle in the tablecloth. Perhaps I was too forward. No, no, it all right, I said. I felt sure now that I had known the demoness, Miss Whitlaw, in some other life. Why, thank you, she said. The knock came again, more insistently this time. Miss Whitlaw opened the door. Hello, Mr. Lee. Moonshadow and I were just talking. That boy, him talk too much, Father said sternly. No, no, it was my fault, I'm afraid. I kept your boy here listening to the wanderings of an old lady. You too kind, Father said. On the contrary, you're too kind for loaning your son to me for all this time, Miss Whitlaw laughed pleasantly. When you get old, you get very selfish. Here I've kept Moonshadow for so long, and it's nearly three. I didn't even give a thought to getting dinner for my boarders either. Miss Whitlaw had five boarders in her house. Each slept in his or her own room, but all of them ate at the dinner table with Miss Whitlaw. I only saw them once or twice because the demons and demonesses were so old that they kept to themselves. Father and I excused ourselves then and left. I had begun to think about the demons were not really so bad, but that very evening I found out that there can be some bad demons too. I was taking the trash out to the trash barrels when I saw a demon boy lounging against the wall of our alley. I was to find out later that he lived in the tenement house next door. He was about two or three years older than I was, and he was dressed in a gray shirt without a collar. The shirt was of a good, if rough, material. His hair was brown, and his face was covered with brown spots. Freckles, Robin told me later. I passed by him when he kicked me in the backs of my legs. I fell on my back, cracking my head against the ground, the breath driven out of me. Our garbage pail spilled out all over the alley. The boy leered down at me, and above me, on the back landing of the tenement house next door, I saw a half dozen boys begin to shout. Ching Chong Chinaman, sitting in a tree, wanted to pick a berry, but sat on a bee. I jumped to my feet and made the mistake of trying to express my anger in the demon tongue. 
All I could come up with was, I know like you. The boys fell over, one another laughing. Page 152. You know likey me? The boy asked mockingly. I know likey you. In my frustration, I began to curse him in the Tang people's language, using some of Uncle's more memorable curses. I'm going to cut off your head, I told him, and leave it in the gutter for the dogs to eat. I went on from there, embroidering on the scene, but the boy shinnied over the fence while the boys above him began to make mock Tang people sounds. Sounds like wing duck so long and one long hop in rising and falling voices. I could have bitten off my tongue, but I stood there, staring at them, not wanting to let them chase me away. I felt something soft and wet hit my leg. It was an old tomato. They began to throw bits and pieces of garbage at me. Still, I stood there. Finally, stones began falling around me. I suppose they had collected the garbage and the stones before they tried to get me. I felt a vague relief of triumph as at having made them use their biggest weapons. I turned slowly, as if I were not afraid of them, but only bored. A stone caught me in the small of the back. I grunted, but I took my time despite the pain, remembering how Red Rabbit had behaved that other time. Besides, I did not want to give them the satisfaction of seeing me cry. Page 153. I did not tell Father about the demon boys. He might have become worried and insisted that we go back to live among our own people, even if it meant swallowing his pride and settling up with the sleepers. The next day, I tried to go with Father, but he said he was going into a rougher area that day, so I spent the whole time inside the stable. The demon boys must have played hooky that day. Every now and then, I would hear them chant something, and sometimes rocks would thud against the walls. I did my best to go on with my chores and lessons, but it was hard. It did not help my state of mind when Father came home that evening with a black eye and his right sleeve torn. He set down his toolbox and pointed a finger at me. Before you ask any questions, I'll just say that I got the best of a fight with two demons. They ambushed me inside one of Mr. Alger's buildings. I suppose they thought they could rob me. I went out and got some water for Father to wash up. Did they? I asked. Father grinned. What do you think? During the next demon week, the nighttime was especially bad for me. I could imagine that every sound was made by demons or ghosts gathering in the dark to whisper by the door while they waited to pounce on me. Page 154. It got so that I was afraid at night to go outside to the pump in the backyard because I was afraid that demons might be attracted by the sound of splashing water. But I had to wash the dishes, so I would dash out to the pump. With my heart beating fast, I would prime the handle frantically and then run back to the shed as fast as I could, spilling half the water on the way. It was the demon girl who started to wash her dishes outside for the fresh air instead of inside the kitchen at the indoor pump. Though I trusted Miss Whitla, I was not so sure about the demon girl. With her flaming red hair, she seemed like a true fox demoness who would delight in tricking humans. Maybe she was just curious about why I rushed back and forth to the pump but I still was not too sure about the demon girl, and I had heard about fox demonesses luring humans to their deaths. I stayed inside. Finally, the demon girl filled the bucket of water and pointed in my direction, meaning it was for me. I suppose she knew I was watching her from inside the stable. But the next day, the demon girl was on the back porch peeling potatoes, and after that, she peeled some apples, and after that, she peeled some onions. She was laying siege to me, she stayed out there for most of the day until I just had to make a trip to the outhouse, page 155. When I came out, I tried to walk quickly back to our stable, but she dashed down the steps and got in front of me. Why are you scared of the pump, she demanded. I shrugged silently. I trusted Miss Whitlaw not to make fun of my demon talk, but not anyone else. But it's stupid, the demon girl persisted. You lose half the water your way. The demon girl pulled one of her pigtails over her shoulder in front of her so she could study its tip. Are all Chinamen crazy like you? The kitchen door opened suddenly. You, Robin, Miss Whitlaw said sternly. I told you to leave Moonshadow alone. But I'm just trying to be friendly with him, but he won't talk to me, protested Robin. Miss Whitlaw leaned over and spoke gently. How would you feel if you were plunked right down in China in a small village with almost no hope of going back? Wouldn't you be scared? Well, yes. The demon girl admitted reluctantly. Then she looked at me. But I'd listened to some China man who told me there wasn't anything in the village pump or anything near it that could hurt me. She walked back to the steps and picked up her bucket of potatoes and went inside.
Miss Whitlaw stood helplessly by the door. I'm sorry, Moonshadow, page 156. It all right, I said. My cheeks were red with embarrassment. That night, I made myself join the demon girl by the pump to do the dishes. I had to prove to her I was not scared, but I still would not speak to her, and I wore the charm against demons. No sense in taking an extra risk. We're going to pause there and answer <clears throat> number three. So 3A says, what is the real reason that Robin starts to wash her dishes outside and get fresh air? A, she wants to know why Moonshadow is so afraid to go to the pump. B, she wants to taunt Moonshadow just like the demon boys. C, she is curious to see why Moonshadow is out in the yard every day. Or D, she wants to trick him into washing her dishes for her. So, again, this one seems pretty obvious to me. I think you can definitely eliminate two to three of the options and so you should be left with either your correct answer or if you eliminate two of them you'll have it narrowed down to two answers and you should be able to select the best one from there. Go ahead and pause this video to make that selection. I'm going to move on to 3b. 3b. Which evidence best supports the answer above? A. Why are you scared of that pump? She demanded. B, but I'm just trying to be friendly with him, but he won't talk to me. C, maybe she was just curious about why I rushed back and forth to the pump. Or D, but I was still not too sure about the demon girl, and I had heard about fox demonesses luring humans to their deaths. So this one, there's two that I could definitely eliminate, and I would be left with two answers. And again, this is a situation where technically both of them could be correct, but you want to find the one that best matches or relates to your answer in 3A. So... This is where we are actually going to pause today. Um, so again, Google Forms do not save. So you want to make sure that you have something like this written down in your notebook or on your piece of paper so that when we do finish tomorrow, you can quickly plug in the answers that you already answered today. So we will finish chapter seven and this worksheet tomorrow. Um, but you still are, just like last week, you're still being graded daily. So you wanna make sure that today you finish one through three and tomorrow your the expectation will be that you finish four and five. Um, if you have any questions about this, you can comment on Google Classroom, you can email me or you can call or text me. Um, I have been getting um, some calls and emails from um, students and families whose students are struggling to complete this work independently. Um, so I am going to be coming up with a couple times a week for some like small group Zoom meetings um, where you can get extra help. Um, I need to um, talk to Miss Marinelli. I know that she did one on Friday. So I have a meeting with Miss Marinelli later today to ask her how that went um, and ask her, you know, if she recommends using Zoom, if she recommends using something else, um, and just to ask her, you know, the pros and cons of it. So before I pick a group, and before I pick a day and a time, I want to talk to her first about how it went on Friday. Um, but that is something that I'm thinking of starting this week. So if you're someone who's been struggling, um, fear not. We will um, get you the support that you need. Um, otherwise, that is it for me today. Um, Make sure today you not only do your schoolwork, but also do something for your body, your family, your friends, your earth. Um, 
all those things that we talked about um, almost two weeks ago now um, to take care of yourself every day during this difficult time. I love and miss you guys. See you tomorrow.